Tonight, Colorado's surprising racist past, and it's even more surprising, racist present. Denver 7 investigator Ryan Luby's here. This one's very disturbing. It is, because so many of us would never think about it here in Colorado. I certainly had not, but it is here and it is real. And tonight, a man who knows the history of one of Colorado's crown jewels says that community needs to take a stand. Ready? There really is something picture perfect about this place. Beautiful. But if you meet some of the people who've lived in Estes Park for a while. And it's wide open. People like John Meisner. Other covenants made it. You'll learn that pockets of this community were not always so perfect. Some ancestors put these in place. This is kind of like our Confederate statues in Estes Park, uh, except these are statutes. These are uh, subdivisions or neighborhoods where they have race restrictive covenants. How did this happen? Indeed, John, who studies the history of the town, stumbled on this while researching a famous opera singer who lived in a subdivision here. And you just have so, to be reading through the covenants. Absolutely, just reading through and it's six pages and I was, you know, not really paying attention because it's always just words, words, words. And then I said, oh my gosh, this is so appalling. This is saying that, you know, only white people can buy property here. Those covenants founded what is now Stanley Heights, putting restrictions on who could live here, saying in part, none of said building sites or any part thereof shall at any time be used or occupied by or sold, leased or given to any person or persons of any race except the white race. But this restriction shall not prohibit any of the occupants from having employees who are not of the white race. The neighborhood is aptly named for F.O. Stanley, who parceled out the land in the 1940s, who's now an S. Estes Park figure of pride. A statue of him now sits in front of the famous Stanley Hotel. You're basically, yeah. in so many words, calling this man who's yeah. revered yeah. a racist. Yeah. 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 We need to know our own history. That's one of these race-restricted neighborhoods. John says he's chronicling the town's past. And these were, at that time, two and a half cents. To make a point. Because um, it's our history, and it should be told right. Where there's smoke, there's fire. And, and he admits sudden, he's stirring the pot in a way that's not settling well with others. Everybody looks at me and they say, gosh, you're really kind of... Uh, about this, and I am. And I came up here saying, I don't care if I'm chased out of town. I really don't. Estes Park's history is going to be better when I leave than when I came. Estes Park's history is going to be a big deal. At the same time, he's calling for action. Even though the old race-restrictive covenants are not legally enforceable anymore and have not been in decades, John wants individual homeowners who still have them to take a stand against them. It's called an extinguishment of encumbrance. With the help of an attorney, he put together a document that homeowners are already starting to sign. I reject, I repudiate, and I extinguish the above re referenced encumbrance. That they're having him file with the Larimer County Clerk and Recorder's Office. Office. This is just like a little time capsule for future historians to come across and this will be connected to those restrictive deeds. And so they'll see those and then they'll see this which says, okay, that was that generation and now people are going on record this generation saying, I don't, I don't adhere to this, I don't agree, I abhor this, I don't, I don't at all agree with this. This is the moment. Yeah, this is when the first ones get filed from the neighborhoods. It is that easy. <laughs> I, I think they're getting to know me, yeah. And it's convinced the mayor of Estes Park to get on board. Too. We can't change that past. All we can do is help to rewrite the, the, you know, our chapter in history in the future. That's all that we can do, and we should do that, and we should take a stand. People know, need to know where we stood on this issue. It's a wonderful place to walk. Fact is, everyone we found agrees that race-restrictive covenants no longer have a place in their community. I know of nobody in this neighborhood, and I mean, I know pretty much all the neighbors. Um, I know of nobody who would support that today. Sadly, other communities may also have to take a stand. Race restrictive covenants were fairly common in Colorado. The Denver 7 Investigates team discovered whites only neighborhoods all over, including Denver's Ritzy Polo Club neighborhood and 82 other neighborhoods in Jefferson County alone. Nonetheless, back in picture perfect Estes Park, there's now an effort underway to unearth this sort of ugly history there and call it for what it is. It sends a message outside of Estes Park, this is not who we are. We are inclusive, we are not exclusive. Now those types of covenants can differ literally from neighborhood to neighborhood. For instance, we learned of another subdivision in Estes Park that barred Jewish people from living there at one point. <laughs> It's surely, though, they're, they're doing something about this. Well, you would think, but very few, because in many cases, these neighborhoods or subdivisions are small, as few as uh, 10 or 12 homes wedged in between neighborhoods or subdivisions of the same size. So chances are no one's actually looked at these covenants in decades. So on Monday, wow. here on Denver 7 at 6 o'clock in the evening, we'll tell you about the Denver neighborhoods 
that have also taken a stand in how they did it. What an eye-opener. Thank you for that piece of reporting. We'll see you on Monday.